the humble shuttlecock, such an emotive subject for badminton players around the world. Which ones are best? Which one should I use? Thought I'd create a video, try and cut through some of the rubbish that's often talked about shuttles. What this video is about is about showing you the different types of shuttles that are around on the market, giving you a few advantages and disadvantages of each one. What I'm not going to do is, uh, is I'm not going to say one brand is better than other or you should use this type of shuttle rather than that type of shuttle. Everybody's needs are different and everybody's budget is different. Everybody's playing, everybody's club, everybody's school is different. So there might be different shuttles that suit you. Split the shuttles up into six categories which we'll go through one at a time. Um, just to give you an overview of what I think um, of each type of shuttlecock and hopefully that can help inform your decision uh, as to which ones you test for yourselves. Right, so the first type of shuttle we're going to talk about today are the budget plastics. These are designed to get people started playing badminton as cheap as possible. They're made out of a foam base and an injection molded plastic nylon skirt. Uh, the advantages of them are that they're durable, uh, they're quite cheap, they're going to cost you maybe about five pounds for uh, half a dozen, uh, give or take a bit. They're good for schools, perhaps very beginners, um, they're pretty basic, you can see that the, the top of them there is just shoved into the, the foam. Their flight of these shuttles is pretty poor. Uh, you hit one, you don't get much feedback. Uh, they fly very flat, very long way. If you hit them too hard, they'll just squeeze up and then fly like a bullet. So. Anyone playing some serious badminton probably should avoid these, so try not to buy the plastics with the foam base. So next up we have the cork based plastics. So these are more at the premium end of the market as far as nylon shot corks go. So they have a cork base just there and the same sort of injection molded plastic nylon skirt. Differences are that these shuttles are designed for to give a more realistic feather-like flight. Um, there's much variation within the categories, but in general, they, the cork base gives them a, re, a much better hitting feel, um, just like the cork base on a feather shuttlecock. Um, the nylon skirt is generally a little bit stronger, um, which gives them a more stable flight. Um, some of the most popular ones that we sell in the shop, uh, the good old classic Yonix Mavis 300, which is still used a lot around here. Uh, the slightly better, more feather-like Yonix Mavis 600. And there's also the Ashaway Bird 2, uh, which is their um, closest they can get to a feathered flight with a plastic shuttle. So these shuttles, they are a little bit more expensive. They're going to maybe cost you around £8 for half a dozen uh, but you can play up to a decent standard with them they don't quite give you the sort of hitting feel and enjoyment that a feather does but if you're quite cost conscious these will last quite a while and um, you could possibly play a whole club session with you know eight pounds of shuttles uh, so yeah if you have to use a plastic shuttle when you're playing badminton and I know a lot of people do then try and get yourself a nice one and um, so at least you can um, get some enjoyment out of your game. Right so the next type of shuttle we're going to look at is what I'm going to call for purposes of this video the low grade feathers. So these are the entry level feathers on the market cork based um, natural goose or duck feathers on the top. Now these are a natural progression for a lot of people when they've been playing plastics they they think oh maybe we should play feathers we'll be able to train better we'll get better at playing badminton. The problem with low grade feathers is they're made to a budget. Now all the brands do them I'm not picking on any particular brand and um, they're made 
to a price point. So they tend to have um, feathers that are not exactly straight, not exactly white, um, and quite thin around there, um, which makes them quite prone to breakage. Also, the cork that is in these low-grade feathers um, it can be full of cavities, um, it's not particularly high grade, so it can often disintegrate and move around on a big impact. Feathers, they do cost a little bit more money. I'm going to say that for low grade feathers you're going to be looking around £13, but bear in mind you do get a dozen in a tube, so you get twice as many. Uh, but I think the mistake a lot of people make is they're used to hitting a plastic, and when they hit a plastic they're really just smashing it as hard as you can. There's very little subtlety to some plastics games, so they just try and hit the plastic as hard as they can. When they first try a feather, the feather flies a bit differently and they end up absolutely welting the feather, sometimes catching the ends of it, and then the feather dies very quickly. So people who are used to using plastics often hit the feathers very badly, at least for the first couple of sessions, and they end up going through a lot of these low grade feathers very quickly. Um, that puts them off because they've spent a lot of money, they're not used to shuttle breaking and then they go back to using plastics forever which is a shame. Um, you know low grade feathers are you know great for what they do if you do want a cheap feather for training or you want multi feeds or something like that you know maybe you can get away with using more juniors who don't hit it very hard something like that. Um, but in general, my advice would be to buy the best quality shot that you can, because in the end, it will save you money. Um, I've recently been hitting with some of these low quality feathers. Uh, you, can, you can break one within a couple of minutes. And once you've broken off a bit of the end of the feather, or, or a couple of feathers in a row, it's pretty much unusable. You can't use it for knock-ups, it flies all over the place. Uh, the only other slight downside for these is that compared to some better feathers they don't have that real feedback and they don't particularly fly as straight as perhaps some of the better shuttles. So the next category uh, is a type of shuttle I'm going to call hybrids. Uh, a lot of you won't be as familiar with these, but there's something that's new onto the market. Uh, I think it's basically where the future of badminton is going to go. But for the moment, there's a lot of companies sort of vying for a bit of market share in this new area of badminton shuttlecocks. So, as I showed you on, previous on a previous video about plastic shuttlecocks, there has been attempts in the past to make shuttlecocks that are fully synthetic um, that fly like a feather like this Victor Carbon Sonic. Uh, this didn't really turn out that well. It was promising but you know the flight wasn't really there. Um, now m new competitors coming onto the market which are much much better. Uh, they're not fully synthetic um, but they tend to have a composite cork base um, which is just lots of cork squashed together. Um, a little injection moulded um, section there and then some feather tips on the end. So they look pretty much like feathers. They're a little bit squishier when you when you push on them but when you hit with them they're really impressive. They fly just like a feather. Um, if you didn't tell people a lot of people would find it hard to notice. Um, at the moment there's the Kawasaki King Kong 500 which is great, sold lots of those and there's the Forza Hybrid 5000 um, which will be coming out uh, before the season. Uh, they're both similar kind of price point around £12-£13 for a dozen so really good prices and the main benefit of the hybrid shot as far as I can tell is that they're really durable. Um, you can play with one of these for such a long time compared to a low grade feather for the same cost. They're cheaper than the premium feathers but, they're, uh, but they last really well. Uh, there's also rumours around that Yonix are making one which I'm sure will be amazing. Um, don't know about anything about that shuttle yet um, but very excited to see it when it comes out. Um, 
but for the moment if you can get hold of some of these and give them a try before the season I'd uh, I'd give it a go uh, there's not many in the country right now but I'm sure this category will be really big in years to come next up is high grade feathers so these are the kind of feathers that are made really well they have really good quality cork the feathers have been carefully selected to be straight and white and thick uh, in all the different planes they're quite durable compared to the low low grade shuttles um, and the playing experience of them is fabulous again cork base usually a goose feather um, grade A or AB um, they are fantastic for playing badminton um, and a lot of them uh, they work out quite good value for money as you can see they could cost you around 20 pounds a tube 20 pounds a dozen but the extra playing time you get out of them um, I think makes up for that uh, they can take quite a lot of punishment so you can play a good few games um, of men's doubles with them sometimes um, and they still look relatively good um, also the high grade feathers if they do break if, if stuff begins to snap they often fly a little bit straighter than a lower grade feather would anyway so if you have a junior club or you know local schools that want feathers and you use the high grade feathers you can often recycle them um, for knock-ups training etc etc which you might not be able to do for the low grade feathers so that gives the high grade feathers even more value for money uh, personally this is where I think most clubs should be at it seems a big investment first of all to get 50 dozen of something like the Yonix AS30 which is probably the standard candle in this category um, every manufacturer has one like the Bablat ones uh, the Victor Gold Champion and um, there's, there's plenty and try them all out see which ones you like um, but if you're buying shuttles for a club this would probably be where you should be at prices of these have gone up a lot over the past few years which has driven the uh, innovation in the hybrids category so it'd be interesting to see how that develops in the future so saving the best for last we're gonna just have a quick talk about premium grade feathers so these sorts of feathers are the best shuttles that each manufacturer can make things like the onyx as50 the adidas fs7 the victor master ace to name just a few so these are the, the top grade corks the really nice um goose feathers they they almost gleam how white they are they couldn't be any whiter and straight they're just a marvel of engineering uh, i heard one stat once that it's only one in every 10,000 feathers that gets into one of these um just lovely things um when you play with a premium feather um you can feel the difference it it just such a lovely experience to hit um when I was playing with some Victor Master Ace a couple of years ago, I could almost describe it as creamy. Um, they are more expensive, you know, I'm, I've put down £25 here for a dozen. Uh, it's a lot of money, probably more than most clubs can afford. Uh, but if you're really seriously into badminton or you know someone who is, maybe it's worth just buying them a tube for a present so they can keep one in their bag. Um, you know, they, they are lovely but out of the reach of most people and um, these are the kind of things that players play with in tournaments um, and they're just really well made and nice to play with so time for a bit of a summary so we've got six broad categories of shuttles here and um, best thing for you to do is to try them out you know don't rely on my word buy a tube try them out see what you think see if it suits your needs um, if you're looking for durability um, maybe the plastics uh, or the hybrids 
might be the way to go. If you're looking for a combination of durability and value for money, I'd say the high grade feathers, um, if you want that playability as well, um, or the hybrids, they're very good. Um, ones to avoid, I'd say if you avoid the budget plastics, if you avoid the low grade feathers, if you can, um, probably the premium feathers as well, you might as well just go for the high grade feathers. The premium feathers, as I said, are very nice, but they are very expensive. So I would stick probably to these three categories when you're buying for your club. Either the cork based plastics, if that's the way you want to go for the extra durability and reduced cost. The hybrids, again, for the extra durability and reduced cost, but the added benefit of it playing much more like a feather. Or go the full beans and go the high grade feathers uh, because you know if you test them over a long period of time the high grade feathers are actually quite good value for money uh, because of the extra playing time you get out of them they might cost more than the low grade feather but you make that back in the amount of playing time uh, so thanks for watching uh, I know shuttles can be an emotive subject so I'm expecting a lot of comments on the video and um, tell me what you use and why um, Again, I'm not going to talk about which brand of shuttle is best, just which broad type. Um, all of these shuttles and more are available from clubrackets.com. We do great deals in bulk for clubs. Um, so if you're looking to get a bulk deal for the season, then please get in touch.